everybody! Welcome to Common Censored. I'm Lee Camp, joined as always by Eleanor Goldfield. Hello. <laughs> this is the show where we talk censored stories and people, sensible solutions and common ground movements to fight and build. And sometimes other stuff. I feel you remind me of that Robin Williams bit <laughs> about how he wishes that the Mexican um, football announcers would do golf. And oh, by football, yeah. I mean actual football. Yeah. That's funny, though, that you referenced him because it sounded like Good Morning Vietnam. Separate, oh, well. Separate Robin you know, Williams role. I, I guess his roles inspired his stand-up? Or, Maybe. Could yeah. be. The with, stand-up was definitely after Good Morning Vietnam. With that, I'll say, go! <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. Let's dig into some of what's going on this week. Um, I realize I covered this in my live stream today with Brian Becker. Uh, however... I still think there's a couple of things I wanted to hit on, and I think it's an important news story, so I figured let's give it to the podcast audience as well. Biden has said that the troops, he announced today that the troops, although people knew it was coming, that the troops will be out by September 11th. I think he just threw a dart at a calendar, and that's the date that it hit <laughs> hit on. So, you of know, Afghanistan. this- <clears throat> Out of Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, out of everywhere around the world? Uh, no. Yeah. Out of Afghanistan by September 11th. Now, of course, they're celebrating this as, oh, my God, Biden's announced the troops are coming home. But, of course, this means they're missing the uh, long, uh, long meaning months uh, declared departure date of May, I think, 11th or May something. Uh, So basically they're saying, yeah, we've been there 20 years, but give us, uh, we'll take us six more months, you know. Uh, So in, like... The, the question is for, like, anti-war activists or those trying to hold, you know, the administration, any administration to account over our endless wars. Is this something to celebrate? It's like, yes, you should be glad that the troops are coming home, if this happens, by the way. Mm-hmm. But I, this is, like, so ridiculous. It's like, I don't know that I can be like, yay, peace is on the horizon. This is like if someone chopped all the limbs off a person and then stopped cutting and you were like, he saved their life. Uh, Well, I mean, so yeah, I'm definitely hanging my hat on the if portion of this, but also, I mean, (coughs) excuse me. Um, I feel like it's, it, you often hear these things like, oh, we're, we're taking troops out, but we're going to leave peacekeeping or training forces. Well, yeah, exactly. And it's like, well, what the fuck does that mean? Contractors. And so basically, you're not actually leaving because leaving would be a threat to the goal of imperialist hegemony. So that's great if you if you bring. I mean, especially for the people coming home. Like, I'm, you know, I'm sure at least some of them are like, "What the fuck am I doing here?" Um, and for those who aren't, you should still get the fuck out of there. <laughs> but like, it's not like we're, you know. We're scooting backward and be like, look, I'm so sorry we fucked up your country for not just like the past 20 years, but even before that, like in the seven, like, I'm just sorry. Um, Now we're going to leave you alone. And you know what? We're going to pay you reparations for the shit that we fucked up. Yeah, we're going to pay you billions of dollars. Like, this is, like, what's happening is not actually us leaving and making amends. It's us, like... It's basically like stabbing someone, and I know this because of stage I, fighting. I it's said stabbing someone. Cutting limbs off. No, 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 you can't no wait. Go to stabbing. No, now. wait. This is better. It's stabbing <laughs> someone, and then I learned this in, in in theater school via stage fighting is that the if you pull the blade out, it actually causes a deep. If you pull it out like quickly and 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 violently, uh, then it actually causes a uh, m- like more severe damage because what happens when you stick a blade into someone their muscles will contract around it do i need to give a parental so, warning on this <laughs> i feel like i need to so when you pull it out fast like that you're actually ripping through extra muscle um cover your children's ears folks and well, i don't so, know where yeah, this is going it's actually so this was the, the what they were teaching us was basically like if you get stabbed on stage and then they retract it. You shouldn't look relieved. You should look more in pain because that's actually how it worked in By real life. By stage fighting, she means the cult she was in. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the metaphor here <laughs> is that is that we are. Did you just have an espresso? We are. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> we are violently removing troops from Afghanistan, 
and, you know, still keeping fragments of that like vicious jagged blade in there. So the idea that this is somehow going to be like peaceful and nice and we're making amends, that's bullshit. And that's if this actually happens. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. (laughs) (laughs) I think TED talk would uh, not be pleased. (laughs) And you then had a demonstration where you spray blood all over the audience like Adam's family. I'm so Um, down. I'm so down. (laughs) But no, you're absolutely right about this whole like, oh, we're getting out of Afghanistan, which is how the mainstream media will portray it and everything. But we're we won't be out, and we'll. I mean, who knows whether we'll ever will ever be out. But so let's say they do take the troops out, there will still be probably contractors there, even if they took the contractors out. It's like how much will we continue to like quote unquote own that country, even with those things going on? Like we'll still have our puppet uh, officials in there. We can bribe them from overseas. We could drop drone bombs, which is obviously what we'll continue to do. Cause he didn't say we're going to stop drone bombing. Uh, so the idea that we're like done with Afghanistan is mm-hmm. laughable. And, you know, also the fact, oh, we're getting out September 11th, like war crimes for the next six months are still months are still war crimes. Like imagine if he stood up there and he was like, hey, everybody, good news. We're going to commit war crimes for the next six months. Like, And it's also just like really twisted that. I mean, September 11th is is, is, is is a twisted day to do it on for several reasons. One being like. Unless on that day you're going to pull troops out of Afghanistan and send them to Saudi Arabia, because right. that's <laughs> so like the, the just everything about that date is just and and of course it's it it also speaks to this sort of blind patriotism, right? Like, oh, you can't complain because it's happening on this hallowed day. Hashtag never forget. Fuck you. <laughs> um, how about... Wait, was fuck you part of that hashtag? Yes. Oh. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, it's just like, there. It's, it's, it's a multi-layered shit cake. And, and I'm not even sure... I mean, that, the best shit cakes are multi-layered. ...that this shit cake is going to be served because... I I tr- I trust Biden as far as I can throw him up the stairs, <laughs> which you learned in stage fighting. <laughs> no, but I learned I did learn how to stab people and how to hit people. Good, not but not you know. Oh well, that's not good. Right, that's that's useless. <laughs> um, yeah, and and another point here is the Afghanistan papers, which came out way too late, but they came out like a year ago. And they were published in the fucking Washington Post. This is like, the, the, even liberals fucking know about this. The Afghanistan Papers, it was a multi-series invest. It was one of those rare moments that Washington Post did any investigation uh, into anything, revealing that no one has known what the goal was in Afghanistan since the beginning since Bush was in office, they didn't know what the goal was in Afghanistan because the goal was really just to to obliterate them and to to uh, make sure that it couldn't become a strong country and to yes, we did take some of the resources, we did want their opium, we did want their uh, rare minerals, but. It's, I think it's been a lot more about just making sure there wasn't a socialist state there that was aligned with the Soviet Union. And, of course, our uh, fight against them as a socialist state goes back to the 70s, uh, which we don't need to get into now because it'll take you know, 45 minutes. But, you know, I think those were the goals, but they can't say those goals. So internally, even from Bush to Obama to Trump and now to Biden, they don't actually know what they're pretend goal is it's like uh, a it's like romeo and juliet like you don't even know why the fuck the families are fighting anymore it's just that they are and so you have to shoot each other every time you see each other um but what was i gonna say damn it i lost my train of thought now i'm just thinking about leonardo DiCaprio and claire danes who's hotter mm. I'd say, I'd say, (laughs) see, this is tricky. It's kind of awkward because I feel like Leo looked a lot like my brother in that same era. uh, So I recognize that he's attractive, but it's a little uncomfortable for me. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm also like Claire Danes isn't really my type. Uh I have to say, I'm not like when it comes to women, I'm not really into like the light, the very lithe and demure. You like the dark and swarthy. (laughs) I do. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, you carry on while I try to find that train of thought. Uh, well, that's fine. I was going to wrap up on Afghanistan because, uh, you know, I I feel like I got it. 
<laughs> so, so um, I'm going to call on Eleanor. Thank you. Um, so there's a book uh, that's called uh, No Good Men Among the Living, and that actually comes from, uh, I believe it's a, it's a saying in Afghanistan, maybe in other places in that region. Uh, but there are no, there are no, um, no, no good men among the living and no bad men, men among the dead. And it's about Afghanistan. And... I beg to differ on the dead thing. <laughs> well, right. But I think one of the Koch brothers is dead. I, I yeah. Amen. Um, but Kissinger is still alive. I mean, holy shit. Anyway. So, um, so one of the one of the things that the author and I'm sorry I can't remember the author's name, but one of the things that the author brings up is the fact that like by the even before the end of 2001, the Taliban was like decimated in Afghanistan. Yeah, because the U because U.S. military. That's all. Like, yeah. but that's not a good story, right? That you can't. Like, we created this whole narrative of the forces of evil a la the fucking Second World War. Like, ev like you know, worse than Hitler or whatever the fuck. Yeah. You can't just say that you went there for, like, two months and now we're done. Same, that same with That doesn't do well for yeah. the narrative, but it also doesn't do well for, of course, the military-industrial complex. So you've got all these people pumping out weapons and they're like, I'm sorry, two months is just not going to cut it for our bottom line. Right. So then you have this, uh, you know, the... the the, the the beginning of the end really where we were creating terrorists to justify the war on terror and you had a a great joke in your old stand-up bit about like we were losing a game of solitaire we because we were funding the taliban we would right. pay we would pay the warlords of the taliban to let our trucks through because in these mountain pass roads it was the only way to get through so we were literally paying the taliban to fight the taliban yeah that's how it's done folks and they've done that since like 2012 or something yeah. like that was a decade ago um, all right. Well, we'll move past Af Afghanistan. If you want to hear uh, a little more on the history of Afghanistan, then check out my interview with Brian Becker, which you can watch at LeeCamp.com slash Moment of Clarity or on the Moment of Clarity podcast. Okay, let's get to Elon Musk. Uh, so rumor has it on the street, he's going to save us. <laughs> Is he going to save us? So... I'll go ahead and say, first of all, I'm a, I am really enjoy the, the journalism uh, that's done at Current Affairs. They have, like, just my particular brand of snark and, <laughs> uh, and also just, of course, like, really great investigations and commentary. And they just wrote uh, an article that says, surely we can do better than Elon Musk. <laughs> and the basic premise is that, like, why the fuck is there all this fandom around Elon Musk and let's let's count the myriad ways in which there should not be and I'm not going to go through with the whole entire article because it's pretty long um but it's brilliant I definitely recommend that folks check that out on current affairs I, th I think part part of it and I know we're going to get into details in a second but part of it is I think people are getting desperate about climate change and so many other like existential crises and so they want a daddy figure that says not only can I save us but I have the money to do it well, right. right. And this is, uh, you know, this is a point, you know, to that point. This is something that's brought up in the article uh, where uh, uh, he writes, quote, Musk fandom, which sounds like a perfume. Um, <laughs> Musk fandom arises in part because he's offering something resembling a path to clean energy and space exploration, both of which are appealing and important. But it's a mirage and following it will take us further in the direction of dystopia. Instead, we need a humanistic vision of a high-tech future, one that rejects workplace tyrants, privatized spacefaring, and ever-multiplying underground freeways in favor of democratic governance, strong public institutions, and transit for the people. Right, like per people working together as opposed to a, a kind of totalitarian structure of this. I mean, he's a corporate dictator. Now, every corporation is a, is a dictatorship, but he's one people are worshiping. Well, right. And it's so funny because, like, people will bring a guillotine to Jeff Bezos' house, but you don't hear a lot of chatter about Bezos because it's like, oh, well, he's making electric cars. Okay, you, well... You, hold on. You just miss, misspoke. You meant a lot of chatter about Musk. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, there's not a lot of chatter about Musk, but dude is a powerhouse of combating unions, um, in fact, in March, uh, then this is from the article as well. The national labor relations board ruled that Tesla had engaged in unfair labor, labor practices, 
uh, even firing workers for union organizing yep. in direct violation of federal labor laws. And this is the same shit we're seeing at Amazon, but for some reason it's okay if Musk does it because he's got a fucking battery powered car. And when the COVID, when the COVID lockdown first started, he was insisting like that his workers should go back to work like because he doesn't give a fuck. Right. Um, and this is, uh, this is, I mean, there's so many, there's so much shit that Musk has done where you're like, uh, what? Um, Musk had previously lambasted unions in correspondence with workers, promising them free frozen yogurt instead. <laughs> because why do you need fair work practices when you could have frozen yogurt? Which, by the way, is not even as good as ice cream. So fuck you on several levels. Oh my God. Do you know how many union efforts have been stopped by Free Bagel Fridays? <laughs> Most of them. Most of them have stopped by that's, free, free that, bagels. That's what we got you. Dude, you put out free bagels. Mm. Everyone's like, I can't believe our benefactors are so just and generous. Well, especially if they've got like the garlic bagel that's like <laughs> fresh off the, you know, hot off the press. And you got like the chive cream cheese. Uh-huh. Um, the other thing that like this, that this article points out is that Elon Musk is like a fucking petulant child. So for instance, he does, he does not like the color yellow. <laughs> and that's important because he has removed brightly colored warnings around his factories like he's in there anyway. Um, because he doesn't like the color yellow, he also didn't like that there were too many signs. He also didn't like the warning beep forklift make when backing up. So that led to cutting back on those standard safety signals, which means that people are getting hurt every day and near hit incidents where people are almost getting crushed or hit by cars is routine. Like I hear that due to his yellow issue, when he urinates, he goes, no, no, no. I mean, I would hope that there's that level of pain and frustration in his everyday. <laughs> um, so like I, in, in this, I'm, I'm not like, I, i people might think that I'm fucking with you, but I'm not like legit because he doesn't like yellow or beeps. He's willing to put well, this his is, workers at risk. Okay. And for a, a factory, few, a few he things. doesn't fucking work in. He a doesn't few, go to work a there. Few, a few things. This is very similar to Steve Jobs, who would like walk into the designers and say like, hey, take all of someone's music collections of thousands of CDs and, and put it on uh, something this, the size of a, mm. a little uh, stack of cards. And they were like, what? How do we see you later? And they're like... And, and he, and you know, they were like, well, we did it, but it's the size of a laptop. And he's like, he's like, fuck you, go to hell, get it right. Like, uh, you know, he would treat people like shit if, if they didn't create his creation the way he envisioned it, uh, you know, looking smooth and perfect and, and all this shit. And so there's a lot of similarities there. And I think that this is, uh, and I'm, I, we may not know the intricacies of Bezos, but I'm sure Bezos has shit like this too. Uh, so the, part of this has to do with power. When you have pure, uh, uh, immense power, uh, you you find it perfectly normal to think that your every need is supposed to be met. Uh, we see this a lot with celebrities. I mean, I've been around some some b- big celebrities where you could just tell that like no one had ever said no to them, and mm-hmm. so they they start to think that every thought that comes out of their head must be right because literally very smart people that are around them go, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, So there's some of that going on. But I think the bigger point is like, this is what succeeds in America. This is not a like, oh, wow, how did this maniac end up running a big company that is the guy that ends up running a big company sociopaths run big companies because you have to be willing to step on everybody you have to be willing to fuck over workers like the people that say hey let's all uh, work together and you know let's make sure everybody's taken care of they may succeed to a point but they're not going to become the elon musks of the world they're not going to have a hundred billion dollars it would never fucking happen Well, and incidentally, it's funny, like when people talk about, you know, Elon Musk making his billions, this is another factor that you see with quote unquote self-made entrepreneurs. Uh, They're just not. Like Trump. Trump self-made too. (laughs) Right. You know, he was born in the projects. I don't know if people know that. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. He actually was (laughs) floating down a river in a raft with nothing but a uh, satchel to his name and uh, somehow made the Trump empire. (laughs) Um. So 
the idea that Musk, you know, is a is an entrepreneur is is ridiculous in several ways. One is that Tesla was not his company. <laughs> um, the second is that uh, it was yeah. I, is it in the article? Uh, I, I had I had heard that it was it was a small company that he basically bought and then had them sign something that said, or they, maybe maybe you said you told me this that signed something that uh, that they could not declare that he didn't found it. Right. They can't call themselves founders. Right. Um, so the other thing is that uh, that uh, a, in 2015, there was an LA Times investigation that revealed that Musk's empire was built on $4.9 billion in government support. Um, and this is due to several factors. Uh, one, thanks to, for instance, a $350 million Department of Energy loan, which came at a crucial time. Also, the fact that uh, uh, people were able to buy Teslas, which are fucking expensive, because the government paid them to buy electric cars in the form of tax credits. Um, for instance, in Travis County, the article points out, uh, the county has offered four, $14.7 million at minimum in terms of a tax break for building a Tesla factory. A Nevada factory was built on the promise of $1.3 billion in tax benefits over two decades. Now, with Biden's giant infrastructure bill set to give out $174 billion more in electric vehicle investments, Musk is going to get a new windfall. So, And, and I think it's important, because I think a lot of people would be willing to forgive those things if... It was if it were true that he was getting us past a fossil fuel world, like if he was legitimately creating a sustainable world, then they could say, I don't care if he got some government funding. I don't care if he's a dick. I don't care if he uh, doesn't. You know, I yeah, I don't love that he treats workers like shit, but he's he's saving humanity. But the truth is that he's not doing that either, because in a call, and this is my same criticism of Biden acting like 500,000 car chargers is going to save us from climate change. Uh, in a in a car culture world where everyone is mm-hmm. almost everyone is expected to buy a car, and yes, those who who don't have a car and need to take public transit, we don't take care of our public transit, so it's incredibly difficult. Meaning it pushes people to try and to have to buy a car, or you know do something. Uh, and so we have a world where all, almost everybody, almost every adult I know, I mean, we, I don't have a car, you don't have a car, but most people in DC have cars. Almost everybody ad, adult I know has a car and it's, it's just incredibly normal in the America to own a car, sometimes two, sometimes three. Uh, and that, Meanwhile, I have friends in Sweden who don't even, who are my age, who don't have a driver's license because and, it was never worth their time to get one. And that reality of everybody having a car cannot sustain. It is impossible. If the whole world, everyone bought a car, I mean, imagine the amount of materials that go in to making and sustaining any mm-hmm. car, electric, not electric, gas, doesn't fucking matter. I don't care if it's powered by fucking corn, okay? It, it, no matter what goes into it, it is incredibly wasteful. And then, of course, you drive it for a few years and you throw it out or whatever. You sell it, maybe the next guy throws it out. But it it gets it ends up in a landfill somewhere and it's like the amount of waste is immense so yes i'm glad electric cars are better than gas cars it but, but let's not act like this is saving our future well right and you've hit the hit the core of a, a of an important issue which is it's not just about using sustainable energy which by the way lithium is not like never ending so that has to be addressed but we created a coup in bolivia so i think it's cool. we coup whoever We're, the fuck we want yeah, it's, um it's all it's all good that's a, a a tweet that uh that musk put out when the coup in bolivia was happening was basically like we coup who we want to because musk is well aware that there's a shit ton of lithium in bolivia and he wanted it um so that's not sustainable not in terms of imperialism or in terms of climate chaos um but let's just hypothetically, uh, but, but okay. So the core issue is that we just have to consume less in all of the, in all of the areas, whether that be no. cars or whether that be, uh, you know, little knickknacks and shit. Like overall we, and I'm saying this mostly as like, you know, the Western, the quote unquote Western world has to consume less. And as part like, like, let's say hypothetically that these, you know, cars were all made from recycled fucking plastic bottles and ran on hope. 
Um, <laughs> even if that were the case, if everybody had, where the fuck would you put them? And this is another point that that the, that uh, the article brings up is that Musk's answer to this is just to build a shit ton of tunnels, which um, for several reasons, that's fucking stupid. I mean, the amount of infrastructure that you would have to to address in order to make sure that they're safe, so they're not constantly caving in, but also just like at some point they're well, going to get like clogged. And, it, and it's then moving what the away, fuck? it's moving away from public transport. It's moving away from like 50 people on a train or a bus or something, which obviously is the best way to move people around. I mean, that's well, right. not debatable. And let's talk about the environmental destruction of just digging a bunch of fucking tunnels. Like we don't think about it, but there are entire universes under the under under our feet, you know, like networks of of ecosystems that exist under our feet. So that's the other thing. And you know, to your point about public transit, Musk famously hates public transit. And I'm just going to read a quick little quote um, that he, you know, he was quoted as saying, quote, "I think public transport sucks." Why do you want to get on something with a lot of other people that doesn't leave where you want it to leave? It doesn't start where you want it to start. It doesn't end where you want it to end. And it doesn't go all the time. It's a pain in the ass. And there's like a right. bunch take, of random strangers, one of whom might be a serial killer. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like this, is, this reminds me of like the shit that people think when they've like never met a Jew Meanwhile. and then they're like, they eat babies. And I'm like, well, Obviously, you've just never been around. Like, obviously, you've never been on a bus, dude. Meanwhile, you're far, far more likely to die in your own in car. car. In a car. Yeah, in your own car than in a bus. Undeniably. And like a billion to one. The odds of dying on a bus are almost nothing. The odds of dying in your car are fairly high compared to a lot of things. And you're much more likely to be murdered by just a, a killer in general, if you continue to treat your workers like shit, continue to say dumb shit like that, um, and are just a general asshole. Like, you're much more likely to 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 get the ire of people who, you know, might be on the edge <laughs> and just see you also, and then kill you. I'm just saying. Speaking on behalf of serial murderers, I feel like, you know, we get a bum rap. We're good people. <laughs> also, if you're on the bus, like... Are you going to go out of your way to kill somebody on a bus? I feel like that's not a, the best place. You don't have a lot of elbow room, you know? No, there was one amazing killing, though, on a Greyhound. Amazing? Horrific. Okay. In Canada. Really? Yeah, a guy in the back of Grey, Greyhound, like, decapitated a guy. What? Yeah. Just... I don't know if he was snoring or what, but... <laughs> uh, pretty uh, pretty rough stuff. Well, let but, that be a warning to you, Lee. I know you snore. still, though... Per percentage wise the odds of that happening are pretty slim well also well i you, guess you'd, you you're you'd, about a, you're about uh i'm guessing 80 <sighs> 80 000 trillion times more likely to get decapitated in a car crash <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean like this is just this is so indicative of like how fucking out of touch these people are and where where they're where they're thinking and their well, focus really that. is because no if this guy had ever been on a fucking bus or ever been on a subway or whatever, like you'd realize, oh, this isn't bad at all. Like this is actually pretty convenient, particularly like in places where it's well run. Well, it's convenient if you have some little part of your soul that <laughs> understands that there are other people in the world and that they also have to get places and like you stand in line to get on the bus and then you stand in line to get off the bus and maybe you sit next to someone that you, you're not in love with, you know, you don't even talk to and, uh, you know, but but you understand there's other humans. It's because humanity is like a lot of people and you're just one of them. But that's not how he views it. He views it as I am far more important than anyone I've ever met. And I, there's nothing more elite and I've kind of never really thought about it much, but there's nothing more elite than I don't like traffic because I'm rich and I still have to sit in traffic, which is ridiculous. Uh, I'm sure he takes a helicopter a lot of places, but he probably sits in L.A. traffic a fair amount. Uh, so I'm I'm super rich and I have to sit in L.A. traffic like all of the other people who are not rich. So this is crazy. Let me build a tunnel under the city for myself. Like, cause he, cause I think his plan was to build the tunnel under the city of Los Angeles and charge like a hundred dollars to take it. So right. the rich would pay a hundred dollars to basically <clears throat> to commute to work, which would take three minutes as opposed to an hour. 
And I think that was his goal. They ultimately, LA stopped him from d- digging his tunnel. But uh, I, th- I honestly think that's how he pictured it. Like, but the other thing, and you raised a, a point that reminded me of this too, is like when I, I had a car in LA for a while. And let me tell you, parking sucks ass. It, I mean, like it's just a it's just a nightmare. But of course, if you're Elon Musk, you don't have to park on the no. street like a fucking pro. Oh my god, you throw your keys to whoever <laughs> is standing nearby, right. and you're like, "Here's a thousand dollars, park right. my car." Like, like he has never. Yeah, I bet you has a, pumped his gas into his car, unless he was like testing out the new tex- Tesla in fucking twenty years. Like, well, it, yeah. So I mean, again, like it's a layered shit cake and. So out of touch, so fucking, um, just like an arrogant asshole. And this is who we're calling like this, 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 this genius who's going to dream us into a new future. Um, and I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to, to, to kind of like dig into here. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to, and we can kind of wrap this idea with this, but, um, no, I could roast Elon Musk all day, so if you want to <laughs> stay on this. Uh, I don't typically read or enjoy The Atlantic, but there was a um, an article that, contrast, that contrasted Elon Musk and Carl Sagan. Uh, and I don't know <laughs> if you, if, if folks are not aware of Carl Sagan, please, please go check him out. He you, was fucking brilliant. Carl and, Sagan would ride a fucking bus. <laughs> and, and wonderful. And he had a very, like, humanistic perspective on the future um one that really highlighted like the universe's beauty and the capability and the need for humans to work together and be mutualist and like how silly and uh petty our like our fights and our struggles on this planet are anyway the pale, <laughs> the, the pale blue dot the pale blue dot it's fucking gorgeous and it makes me cry every time i hear it um you can still watch it on youtube yes you can uh so <clears throat> So the, 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 the journalist of this article... Who are you calling sh- pale, Carl? I've been tanning, man. <laughs> Shannon uh, uh, Steroni writes, quote, Sagan inspired generations of writers, scientists, and engineers who felt compelled to chase the awe that he had dug up from the depths of their heart. Everyone who references Sagan as a reason they're in their field connects to the wonder of being human and marvels at the luck of having grown up and evolved on such a beautiful, rare planet. The influence Musk is having on a generation of people could not be more different. Musk has used the medium of dreaming and exploration to wrap up a package of entitlement, greed, and ego. He has no longing for scientific discovery, no desire to understand what makes Earth so different from Mars, how we all fit together or relate. Musk is not an explorer. He's a flag planter. <laughs> and I just love that because it like it kind of wraps up a lot of like... Not a yellow flag. <laughs> not a yellow flag. Um, it wraps up a lot of like the problems with the the hero worship, the quote unquote hero worship that we have these days where people look up to someone like Musk. Um, And that's not to say that there aren't people like Carl Sagan out there. There are. It's just that we don't talk about them in pop culture like we should. Um, And so, yeah, check out the article on current affairs. It's, it's a great read. There's, you know, plenty of smatterings of snark, which I love. Uh, And it really highlights like how, what a, what a penis wrinkle this guy is and we can do better than him on so many different levels. But I think what's important to take away from that is we have to do better because the future that Elon Musk is shaping does not include you. Okay. <laughs> you poor unwashed masses. You are not welcome in the future that I'm, Elon Musk is. Building. I'm pretty sure he was going to make a biosphere on Mars and send the billionaires there. I think that was his goal. <laughs> uh, a couple of quick things. I looked up uh, the founding of Tesla. Tesla was founded by Martin Eberhard and Mark Turpening in 2003. Elon Musk joined in 2004 and became one of the earliest investors. So he, one of the earliest investors, that's fine, but he wanted to be called a founder. So he tried to, or maybe succeeded until recently in buying them out of being founders, which you can't do because it's just, that's what a founder is. <laughs> but, um, the other point I was going to make is in terms of the hero worship, I did a segment on uh, the, the awful hero worship of the the rich and, and be- specific, more specifically Bezos. 
and showed that he's like portrayed as a god, and I'm sure Musk is too, but we only looked up images of Bezos at, like looking godlike on magazine covers, and there's somewhere he has like an aura, like he's lit like he has an aura, like a, a fucking angel around his head. Uh, there, there's other where, there's one where he's uh, drawn as a Indian god, like Vishnu or something. What? Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Uh, and so it was oh. not, I, I kind of thought we'd find somewhere he looked a bit aggrandized or whatever. I didn't know that like in my joke about him being treated like a God, we were literally going to find several magazine covers where he's portrayed as a God. Jesus so, fucking uh, Christ. it is absolutely like, it, it is a design of our capitalist system to portray these vulture capitalists as the be all and end all of uh, of 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 what you should want to be, what you should mold yourself as, and who's going to save us as the systems collapse down upon us. But of course, this system can't save us from this system. Capitalism cannot uh, be the the you know superhero that swoops in and saves us from capitalism. Uh, but that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to buy our way out of the systemic collapse that capitalism created. And mm-hmm. we're holding up these fucking sociopaths because the sociopaths always rise to the top in capitalism. We're holding them up as our leaders and our and our gods. And capitalism is religion because you're, oh, not, you're not allowed to talk about it on mainstream media. So <laughs> much like religion. Well, what, what was and, the last time? What was the last time anyone said, you know, do you believe in do you believe in God or do you believe there's a God on mainstream media? Or said, do you believe? There's capitalism. And the, you believe capitalism the, the so-called behemoths or, or preachers of capitalism are tax exempt. So it's just like churches, really. There you go. Just like church. Oh, actually, I have that story. I don't we're, I don't think we're going to get to it. But one of the stories I was going to uh, have it, have at the end of the episode here, if we had time, was 55 corporations paid zero dollars in federal taxes on their 2020 profits, profits of millions and billions of dollars. Yep. I'm surprised so. it's just 55. There, there you go. I think, I think that's fifty-five corporations that are like on the, you know. Oh, like the the richest ones. Yeah, like well, these the the they're fifty-five corporations that like made millions of dollars. So During the pandemic. they're not they're not talking about you know a mom and pop shop that right. may have made a few thousand dollars in profit but didn't pay any taxes. They're talking about the big time. Well, no, because the mom and pop shops probably had to pay out the ass in fucking <laughs> right. taxes. Right. Right. A uh, couple of quick things before we keep going. Um, so thank you so many of you for switching over to liberapay.com slash Lee Camp to support this show. Uh, by the way, on hindsight, I wish I called it liberapay.com slash common censored, but I don't know that I can change that now. Uh, but anyway, it's uh, we we are about, I'd say, two thirds of the way to uh, make to getting back to where we were on our Patreon, which was sustaining the show. Uh, so we still need a few of you to go over there. I mean, you could sign up for like a dollar a week. It's not, uh, it's not tons of money, but it makes a difference. It's liberapay, L-I-B-E-R-A-P-A-Y.com slash Lee Camp. And you'll see how to sign up once you go over there. Uh, that would be really helpful. Now, on our live stream, which I'm sure many of you attend on Sundays uh, that we do on YouTube, all of those donations and all the donations on Venmo at Lee Camp, those are all donated from once you donate them to us, they are donated back to people in need. Uh, and if you are one of those people, you can email commoncensored at protonmail.com. Uh, again, when we say people in need, uh, we're talking about if you need you know, 80 or or $100, we might be in a position to help you out. If you're looking for $10,000 for your uh, transplant, your organ transplant, then that unfortunately is not going to happen. But, but we could give $100 towards your organ transplant towards that there we go we could um (laughs) eleanor's movie is at hardroadofhope.com all of her other work which by the way incredible article on mint press but you can also get it at art killing apathy another one coming out soon dot com part de you can't say that in the middle of me giving the website where they don't actually get to the i'm sorry i'm sorry go ahead (laughs) sorry artkillingapathy.com all right now say it uh I really already did. Part two of that incredible article on housing and eviction. We ended, we talked about it a lot on the live stream. So if you want to hear more about how the eviction moratorium is not a moratorium, 
You can watch us at youtube.com slash moment of clarity or read Eleanor's article. Okay. And just in general, check out mintpressnews.com because they do great work and my article is up there and yeah. So moving on, uh, y'all recall Flint, Michigan, which by the way is there. They, I know they were big in the auto making industry and they're still doing pretty well, right? So oh yeah, it's it's still, do, they're doing great. You yeah. know that whole water thing. Because uh, the pensions, they they honored all those pensions, right? Oh. They're all every worker is doing. And wonderful. they, you know, they replaced all of the the poison water and the pi- like. Everything is just it's back to good. We. Uh, I think you're being sarcastic. I am, okay. but I'm not here to talk about Flint directly. Although I think it's important to continue to mention that what the fuck. Why doesn't Flint have clean water? Um, But this is something that's actually going back to last year, but it's a problem, and it's a problem that isn't being addressed. So Mead, Nebraska, which you wouldn't know about because it's like a tiny little uh, fucking... It's a tiny little town in the middle of Nebraska. Um, Isn't that like naming your town Beer, Nebraska? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Although mead is the drink of the gods. <laughs> okay. Um. Anyway, so an ethanol plant outside of... There you go. Just outside of Mead, Nebraska, has been using pesticide-laden seed corn. And they discharged... Wait for it. Four million gallons of contaminated wastewater generated by the facility when a pipe broke last February. It's another accidental discharge. That's what the cops said they did in killing Dante oh. Wright. That was an accidental discharge. Yeah. Everybody's accidentally discharging all, accidental. all over the place. Yeah. I'm not referencing what I did the other night. <laughs> <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> um, so, as you might imagine, this these 4 million gallons of contaminated, pesticide-laden wastewater... Uh, have resulted in an environmental disaster uh, that has people, not just there, but uh, who, who are aware of it around the country, calling me the next Flint. Um, the Nebraska Department of Environment and Energy has issued an emergency order to close this plant, which uh, they're calling All 10 Plant, uh, and to cease any more discharges, which, I mean, like, isn't that the least you fucking do? I know, honestly. Um... <laughs> Uh, and that this plant has likely caused pollution of the air, land, and water, um, that will affect the residents of Mead, Nebraska. And residents soon after this happened, which by the way, it's taken, I mean, this, we're in fucking April, 2021, but residents soon after this incident this accidental discharge <laughs> uh reported that they that they were smelling a strange odor and that they had experienced bloody noses headaches upper respiratory distress and more entire bee colonies have collapsed oh, an important Damn scientific it. research from the university of nebraska has been destroyed as the toxins run through these fields also, this plant, because why not, sits over the Todd Valley Aquifer, uh, um, a very important shit. <laughs> periphery I'm... of the Oglala wa- Aquifer that supplies drinking water to millions. I'm the opposite of a hype man. I just sit there going, oh, fuck, shit. Well, God damn it. Because there's no good news in this story. It is the same shit yeah. that we've seen and heard so many times. These incredibly toxic industries, whether they be, you know, oil pipelines or fracked gas uh, entities, or in this case, you know, fucking ethanol plants, discharge incredibly toxic waste into the environment that threatens and causes, I mean, we have no idea what the long-term effects are going to be, but in the, in the here and now people are, uh, are in pain. Their, their water and their air and their land are decimated. And we have the, the powers that be that are supposed to, you know, serve and protect doing fuck all. And let me guess, they'll, uh, we'll find out, you know, a year or five years from now that they actually knew that they were 
releasing this discharge, uh, you know, three years in advance of when everyone else found out. Well, right. And just the fact, like, you know, this is something that you that you hear quite often with oil pipelines. They knew that it was going to spring a leak, but they didn't fucking do anything because it's easier to just pay a small fine than pay to retrofit the entire fucking pipeline and make it safer. Mm -hmm. So they're just like, fuck it. We'll let it spill. We don't give a shit about that ecosystem and those people over there. You know, we'll get a slap on the wrist and, you know, onwards and upwards yeah. it's the same shit here there's no way that you could run a facility like this and not know that some shit is about to go down and yet they're like well i whatever well and and you know what else is i, I like picture this in like uh in like a truly uh you know socialist society or something where let, let's assume that uh you know there's still pesticides yes we'd hope they use organic pesticides but Let's assume there's still pesticides and it's still a pesticide plant, but it's there's democracy in the workplace. So it's run by the workers and, and, you know, it's run by the community and things like that. It's like things may still go wrong occasionally. They'd go wrong a lot less because people wouldn't be cutting corners just for profits because you also are trying to benefit your community. You don't just want profit. Like, profit is not a thing. You're you're it's about just helping the 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 area, the society. Uh, but when something did go wrong, it would be, you'd feel completely different about it. Everybody would be like, oh, that's not helping our community. That's not achieving the one thing we're trying to do. So it would, they would immediately stop and they'd immediately fix it. And you would view the people that did it not as they don't give a fuck about us and they don't give a fuck about the environment. You'd view the people who, yes, there'd be accidents occasionally, but you view the people who caused the accident as, oh, you know, that sucks that they, that, that, you know, there was an accident, but it wouldn't, without the profit motive, it's not like, yeah, we're going to fucking just shit all over the place and be fine with it. Well, I just like to point out that, just, first of all, just because a pesticide's organic doesn't mean that it's safe. And second of all, if you use... You know what I meant, though. Hold on. Let me finish. I let you speak. Um, if you use regenerative farming practices, you don't actually fucking need pesticides. There's... Uh, and this is this is something that I've learned from a few different books, but the most recent one was Entangled Life uh, that talks about how using you basically use like a plant's inherent defense and attack mechanism. So you pair plants together that work well together in keeping, you know, certain bugs or, uh, you know, certain, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, Bacteria? Bacteria and viruses away from that plant. So you can do this because guess what? Humans were farming a shit ton longer than, you know, before pesticides came around. It's just when you do this horrific monoculture style farming that completely decimates the topsoil that sucks nutrients out of the out of the earth uh that doesn't regenerate that doesn't leave space for <clears throat> for actual life so you have to keep trying to shove life into the, the, these farming practices and it doesn't work out it's completely toxic and not sustainable but if you actually farm in a regenerative fashion you don't need all of these fucking poisons so the whole point like the whole idea of a plant like this would be moot okay all great points let me rephrase. Let's say the town bus crashed. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Did any of my other points resonate? Yes. No, all of those points were great. <laughs> okay. I just, I latched on to that first one I because noticed. I was like. I noticed. I disagree. <laughs> but everything you said after that. I felt like I made some good points that were not being appreciated. Look, I wasn't saying that you didn't, <laughs> but I don't, I don't pat, pat you on the back every time you say something correct. <laughs> okay. Okay. You don't pat me on the back either. I think you do a great job. Thank you. What's next? I, th I think we should continue on at this point. Okay. W you, you mean talking about how we Anything. make good points or? No. Oh, okay. Anything else. Uh, no, okay. You'd like to, <laughs> you'd like to leave this conversation? Let's go back to stage fighting. So <laughs> in this scenario, we're using real swords or what? <laughs> Unfortunately, not. 
Um, you know, I always wanted to take fencing when I was younger, but there was never really anywhere to take it. Anyway, True. uh if anybody True. knows of any good fencing places in DC, please let me know because I would fucking love that. There was a guy building one right out here, I could ask him. Mwah, mwah. <laughs> All right, get out of here. Um, we can, you know what? This is, I want to say we can end on a high note. This is kind of a high note. It's a high. Okay, Eleanor, stop being a fucking Yeah, Debbie just Downer. say high note. Just do just it. Just say high note. Just do it. Don't qualify it. Just fucking okay. do it. Thank you. So nearly 400 state and local elected officials across the country have signed a letter calling for an outright ban on new federal permits for fracking and fossil fuel in- infrastructure. That's great. Um, thank you. About fucking time. Yeah. And this, I'd like to point out that this is only the case because of the tireless efforts of grassroots yep. organizing. Nothing in the Democratic Party. Not one, I don't think one Democratic lawmaker, I mean, yes, there's been one or two, but very few have stood up against fracking. So this all comes from outside of our two-party corporate shit show. Yes. Um, another really great point in the letter um, is that they called on the federal government to end fossil fuel industrial subsidies <clears throat> and this is something that I, I know that you've talked about on your show and I've talked about it before uh, before as well. The oil and gas industries and coal and all of that shit are subsidized so intensely that if they weren't, they would be poorer than me. And I'm in debt, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, they they are the behemoths of our economy because we prop them up. That weight you're feeling on your shoulders, that's oil and gas and Elon Musk. Um, <laughs> but so th- th- they, they called on the federal government to end fossil fuel industrial subsidies, revoke oil and gas permits for sites within 2,500 feet of homes or schools, because, yes, that's a thing. Because of accidental discharge. And this is something, a little tangent for you, but for instance, I, I, I found this out when I was doing uh, work on the fracking issue in Pennsylvania, which, by the way, Pennsylvania is like the most fracked state in the in the country. It's, it's I think a, it's Swiss cheese at, point, at this point. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for Pennsylvania to just fall like one foot. It's, like it's, it's going to collapse state, in on itself. Yeah, the whole state just collapses in yeah. like, like two or three feet, where yeah. you're just like, whoa, that was weird. <laughs> Uh, you sounded like Bill and Ted there. Wow. Um, so these pipelines and these compressor stations and all of this gas infrastructure are incredibly flammable. And we've seen this happen. Uh, for instance, like the, the there was a there was a leak at a pipeline, and somebody. Like and and I can't remember if it was that somebody turned on a light switch in their home and their entire home just fucking exploded. And I'm not I'm not making this up that is because not basically cool. what happens is that it's so extremely fam- flammable you can't see it. But something as simple as using your phone could trigger an explosion. Turning a light switch, certainly like you know turning on your gas stove or something, could trigger an explosion that then dominoes to everywhere that that gas has leaked which includes schools uh if you know fucking daycares um you know like playgrounds and shit like homes and this so this is something that people have actively been trying to highlight for a really long time that like hey maybe we should move not even just like get rid of it but like could we move it maybe so it's not right up on my children yeah. and even then the the gas industry is like i'm so no we couldn't do that so this letter calls for that to be a thing for the first time ever um by the way 2500 feet is really not that far like there are no i think they make like like if you're a registered like guy who wore a trench coat <laughs> by a like <laughs> playground i think you have to stay farther back than that right so you are like you have to stay further back than something that could literally like decimate entire communities. So, yeah. Um, so this letter was sent to uh, to the Biden administration, and uh, and this is 
this is good news. And this is indicative, again, of the tireless work that has been done, um, you know, on the ground in, in grassroots organizing. This is incredibly important and we should really promote more of this kind of kind of work, particularly for folks whose you know your advocacy goes in in these well, elected and, and, official and, channels. And yet again, this this shows. I mean, the arc of our society is towards the right place, even as our government is completely filled with a uh, fucking horrific, corrupt ruling elite. Like we're we're getting there. Whether we get there in time before we've just fucking ended this planet's ability to sustain itself is is another question but it, you know the it is pulling in the right direction and it all it's all thanks to everybody outside of electoral politics or mm-hmm. all, or almost all of it it's it's activists on the ground it's people on the front lines it's, yeah and i mean elected officials don't do the right thing they are pushed to do the right thing and we should always occasionally. remember that well, right. I'm saying anytime they do yeah. the right thing. Yeah. Well, it is nice to end on a good note. Uh, so that was a good one. And thank you guys so much for joining us. If you think you got a dollar's worth of content out of this show, please go to liberapay.com slash Lee Camp, L-I-B-E-R-A-P-A-Y.com slash Lee Camp and become a member. Uh, you can get all of Eleanor's work, including her latest article at artkillingapathy.com. Sorry, uh, Art, to, uh, to, to make that website about you. But, um, <laughs> Wait, that's good. It's, yeah, no, it's if, good. If, it's, if it's, art it's, is it, killing apathy. Right, you're, I, you're doing good stuff. Doing good I, I, I agree. I was, you know, Art's a fucking badass. He's out there. He's working. Um, and let's see, my books at LeeCampBook.com. Uh, something we mention sometimes, but I, I, I feel like I haven't said it in a few weeks, is uh, you realize you could listen to a new one of our podcasts just about every day of the week. So if you like this podcast, uh, so this is Common Censored. Eleanor has another one called Act Out you could listen to. Eleanor has another one with Carla Bergman called Silver Threads you could listen to. I have one with Graham Elwood called uh, Government Secrets. And then I have a separate one called Moment of Clarity. So you put all those together and you could basically listen to a new one of our podcasts every day. Yeah. So quit your bitching. (laughs) I think he's what he's saying. (laughs) Quit your bitching. All right. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Keep fighting. Act out.